I think the old universe of control from labels and galleries and museums, if we can implement this in the right way as creators, all of those barriers will evaporate and we will become the owners of the system in which we want to create. the origin of my interest in art. I always loved photography and when I was a child my grandfather bought me a Pentax K1000 which is a beautiful object in itself and so I can remember creating or taking pictures of my neighborhood you know when I was a kid. A lot of stuff going on in here right now. A couple paintings that are going to an exhibition in uh, Tokyo next month. Some other sculptural work. These were based on the Pokemon cards. These will also be an exhibition in Japan. This is all production area, um, so preparing mold preparation, and silicone work, clay, any of the clay sculpting. It took me a, a long time to come around to the idea that I could use an NFT for something that I couldn't do in the physical world. Whenever I enter a new space or a new material, um, a, a new craft, I want the universe of that or the medium of that to also be inherent in the work, right? Um, I don't want to just use it because it's another tool out there, right? So I spent kind of a year not only understanding what an NFT was, and this was 2019, so it was kind of before um, it was part of like popular dialogue, um, but also to understand the capabilities within it and, and really dig into it as well as the community. So this is not the actual work itself. This is a kind of teaser that I made in order to show the evolution of what will be happening with the work over time. So you see the work is slightly eroding. It's passing through these different landscapes. The lighting is changing, right, according to the time of day. So from the beginning of this entrance into the NFT space, community felt so important to me. I've had collectors of my work in the past who follow my work and they almost buy things from, from every exhibition, they have, a, they have a deeper connection to the studio, but there's no real incentive beyond that they want the work. Within this scenario, I saw potential to actually build this group that as I was releasing the, these NFTs, they would be able to create a collection that would comprise something which would be added to for free. I've created 10 of them. The first three are out in the world already. I'm releasing the second three now. For collectors who, are, who manage to aggregate the full 10, I'm gonna deposit an 11th into their wallet when the series is done. So the first three were all based on ancient um, Greek and Roman uh, artifacts that were present physically within my work. And I think the expectation for the rest of the series from people was that I was going to continue with that. But as many uh, people who are familiar with my work know, I've also made sculptures of more contemporary objects that are in a similar state of erosion or decay or crystallization. So the next three are all uh, cars, three different portions that are eroding and reforming over uh, specific time periods. The way that the dust hits and the kind of movement of the car through it as well, kind of a magical, a magical thing. So this work evolves over a time period, which is linked to something, which I'm not gonna say exactly what it is. There's a, a 930, there's a 964, um, and the 356 Speedster. This is uh, 1991 964, which is the same as the black uh, car that's in the NFT. The feeling around the creation of them feels different, but in some ways, like these are as challenging to make as <laughs> a physical sculpture. I mean, the amount of iterations that I went through to come to the final element, where the erosions are placed, how the wind is flying off of the back of the, you know, the dust off the back of the car, even the light. Um, that's present within each uh, iteration. I've just spent so much time kind of dialing that in. These are the quartz pieces that get put into the um, sculptural work. These were all built out. They were all sculpted, actually digitally, and then brought back in. It's kind of the opposite process from the NFTs where they're, they start physical and then go digital. A lot of these start digital and then go physical afterward. Part of the reason why it took me from mid-2019 to 
you know, really 2021 in order to, to enter the space was I felt nervous about entering something that I didn't really understand completely. One of the things that I did was talk to a lot of people who understood the space better than me. Um, and one of them was Jeff Glow. Speaking in terms of creators, I think that there was a challenge for a while uh, in, to figure out NFT minting. Um, and with Chip, our mission was to make NFT minting as easy and user-friendly as possible. Creators can come to our platform in less than a minute, a few clicks, mint their NFTs, get a creator-owned contract, perfect provenance, continuous royalties, and then go and sell that NFT in any marketplace that they would like. And I think that that really takes down a lot of the friction that creators have previously been experiencing. One of the, the first things that they did was try to understand how they could create a royalty structure that would be cross-platform agnostic, right? So right now, if I mint something in NFT Gateway and somebody moved it to OpenSea, and they sell it there, I'm not capturing the royalty, right? That was originally agreed on. And I think that for artists entering this space, this is one of the biggest potentials, right? For us as creators to own the system in which we're working. So the idea of erosion in the work that has been present for, I don't know, the last 10, 15 years in, in my practice um, was really about, in, in the beginning, taking a contemporary object like a camera or a computer or a phone and sort of pushing it into the future as if it was an archeological object that we may be viewing in a thousand or 10,000 years. The material shift in that was important because when we're looking at an object that's actually made of a material like volcanic ash or crystal, there's like a different truth quality about it. It feels more authentic and real. As, as an object. But even when you look at it, it feels like something that has been pushed through this time evolution. Not a Porsche, but another uh, car. Um, this one's a Ferrari, but super detailed every aspect of it. So when looking at the accuracy, right, of the works that exist digitally, they still need to feel like this is identical in scale to the larger version of this car. The other th aspect of it for me in terms of what the material can mean is this idea that even though the works, they look like they're disintegrating or falling apart, they're made of materials that we associate kind of inherently with growth, right? So crystal, diamonds, all of these things, they form over time. We're presented with this object that has like inherent conflict within it. It looks like it's falling apart, but it could also be growing together to like some kind of completion. And these uh, digital sculptures, the NFTs, allow me to do that in a sped up form. I can compress the evolution or the disintegration of an object into however long I, I decide. So this type of pyrite, the way that it grows, this is naturally forming, naturally occurring, almost perfect cubes. And sometimes there's, you know, a couple of them that are sitting within each other, but this is nature. These often get placed within the, uh, the sculptures as well. So Porsche has been an obsession of mine, you know, since um, I was a child, making drawings of them. You know, when we think about design evolution, there's something kind of amazing about the potential for certain objects to capture like a moment in time. Getting into a 1973 Carrera RS 2.7, it's like a time machine. I think the potential for NFTs moving forward is so expansive, we don't even see the potential for things to happen within it. I think ownership of digital assets, as we start to live so much of our lives and our communication through social media and other forms, the ability to capture, and the same way that we wear clothing and that we drive certain cars and that we live in certain houses and that we have you know, friends, we will do all of those things. We, we are in fact doing all of those things digitally already. And so the aspects of our everyday life and the ownership of those things um, will become that much more important. And I think that um, the, the biggest place where there's interesting things for me are as these things start to live within an actual metaverse, right? As specific as I am with works in the physical world, I'm probably that specific and maybe even more with um, these digital sculptures.